Hello. We're going to start off with the basics, insultingly simple basics, I'm afraid, of division. Um, and it's worth just going over this before you go on to the sort of the, the more sort of long division, the tricky stuff. Um, it goes without saying you have to know your times tables for this. I'm afraid there are no shortcuts. If you haven't got your times tables like that, the rest will all go to pot. It's, it's absolutely crucial. It's um, a core line skill, I'm afraid. So let's start off with something really easy. We're going to go 555 divided by 5. Okay. 5 into 5 goes once. 5 into 5 goes once. And 5 into 5 goes once. So there, that leaves us with 555 divided by 5 gives us 111. 111 answer. Good. Now we'll move on to something a bit more, a bit more exciting. And I'm going to give ourselves another colour. Should we have? Oh, that's a rather nice purple. And uh, let's see. 505 divided by 5 again. 5 is a nice number. 5 into 5 goes once. 5 into 0 goes no times at all. That 0 is important. Put it in. Um, just because it's 0, it doesn't mean it means nothing. It's important. And then 5 into 5 goes once. So, just to recap, 505 divided by 5 equals 101. 101. Can you see, if we'd left that if we'd left that naught out, we'd have ended up with 11, and we didn't want 11. Moving on. Now, the next thing is a rather whizzy blue, I think. We're going to do 100 and... No, I know. Hang on. We're going to do 630. 630 divided by 5. Now, we know that 5 will divide into that exactly because it ends with a naught. 5 will go exactly into any number that ends with naught or 5. 5 goes into 6 once, but there's one left over. So we're going to shove that one there. And then we're going to pretend that that says 30. It doesn't, sorry, 13. It says, really and truly, 130. But we're going to pretend it's 13. 5 into 13 goes twice. Remainder 3. And 5 goes into 30 six times. Look at that. Isn't that good? 630 divided by 5 equals 126. Get in. Now, we're going to move on to something just a little bit more complicated now. Give ourselves a bus stop. Ooh, I'm a different. Oh, I fancy that colour this time. Uh, 837. Thank you. Can you see this 7? We're going to divide it by 5. This 7 isn't a naught or a 5, so we know that 5 won't go into the, into this number, 837 exactly. So 5 goes into 8 once, remainder 3. 5 into 33, here's our 33. 5 into 33 goes 6, remainder 3. 5 into 37 goes 7 times, remainder 2. Now the problem is, is what to do with this remainder 2, this leftover 2. Now, let's imagine that we've got 837 um, bottles of Marmite. I love Marmite on toast in the mornings. Excellent. And we're going to package them into boxes of 5. And we're going to send them to lots of people that want 5 bottles of Marmite. And what we do is we put them all out, five into that box, five into that box, five into that box, and there'll be two left over. So for in that instance, it's quite acceptable to say that 837 bottles of Marmite divided into boxes of five will give us 167 boxes, remainder two. The two don't just disappear, and but that, that's enough. Remainder two, in that instance, is absolutely fine. In other cases, um, you might be want to be just a bit more sort of sorted with it. So imagine there are 837 cakes, and you're going to divide them in amongst, say, five troops of um, scouts. 
each troop would get 167 cakes and then there are these, these two left over. Now I could eat them but I won't. I'm a generous person. I'm going to divide them amongst the five, the five groups. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take each cake here and divide them into fifths. There we are, that's into five. It's a really good idea to get practiced at drawing sort of cakes or pizzas, whatever, into rough fractions, so then you can work it out. Now let's have a little look. We could do this with our colours, couldn't we? One group would have two fifths. The next group would have two fifths. This group would have one fifth from this cake and one fifth from this cake, so that's two fifths. This group, pink group, would have two fifths. And then there's two fifths left of the final lot. So as you can see, each group would then end up with two fifths of cake. And that's what that's what is suitable for them. It's cakes, and they end up with two fifths of a cake each. But what we would normally do, because it's a bit more mathematical, and to be honest, it's a bit easier, but it looks it looks a bit more, more flash, a bit more grown up. We put in a couple of decimal points, a decimal point here, should we go back to that purple, and a decimal point here. Have a look. Don't make your decimal points too small, but don't make them huge either, because that's just, just annoying. And as a special treat, we're going to give ourselves a couple of zeros. There we are. What do you reckon? So here we are. We've got to 5 into 37 goes 7, and then we put our remainder 2 there next to the naught. 5 into 20 goes 4. Exactly. No remainder, so we can just ignore, ignore that naught. It doesn't matter. And there's our all, overall answer. If I get my thing to work. Oh, do you see, the rabbit has just hopped past 837 cakes divided by 5. Rabbit, rabbit's going back with the voice. Do you know? Equals 167.4. Do you know what the rabbit does? It hops past, it goes back and past the French windows there with its ears going, loser, loser. So I'm going to say goodbye and leave you with that. It's just a basics of how to do division. Have a practice with some numbers and then go on to the next one on how to do sort of what we call long division. Um, and I'll go and catch that wretched rabbit. And let's see if I can do this. Control, 